Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Are you a witch? Hmm, kind of. Lost my medallion. Fighting a noon wraith. Think you can help? Hmm, yeah, okay. Great. Bye. So, we've got a quest. Are you ready to embark? I am. Got everything I need right here. So I've got iron flask. I've got delft clay. Some other tools and various ephemera we're gonna need. I've got a 3D printer and I've got a metal forge out in the garage. So, the process is thus. I'm going to start by 3D printing a witcher pendant from the game, not the show. I'm going to mold it with the delft clay and the iron flask. And then I'm gonna melt down some metal. I have a couple of alloys, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it. And then pour it into the mold. And the mold is going to have um, air channels and like a uh, metal flowing channel. <laughs> That's pretty much the process. I'll explain more as I go along, but uh, yeah, let's do it. So here is the result. Oh, oh. Don't look at me. I think it turned out really good. I'm hoping that I can get a lot of detail in the Delph clay. It might be a little different when it comes out, but we'll have to just see because I've, I've never done this before, so typical me. But um, yeah, so let's get started by making the mold. So as I said, the first step is filling the iron flask with enough of the Delph clay to pack it. And then just pack it all in. And then I used a hammer to tamp it down like it's espresso or something. And then just scrape off the excess to make sure it's smooth and flat. And then if there's any low points, just kind of repeat the process until it's flat. And then what would one of my projects be without some baby powder? But it's just to keep the two sides from sticking together. And then put the piece in, pressing it in gently but firmly, if that makes sense. And that top bit has a tendency to come loose, but just packing it down works fine. Then comes time to place the top half of the flask on and basically just repeat the process. And then the arduous task of removing the print. And of course, didn't work out well. So I just start over and do the exact same thing again. So now I need to create a channel for the metal to flow into the mold. And I do that with basically just a drill bit and an X-Acto blade. And now I have to create air channels for the air to flow out. Pretty easy, just little lines and then poking holes at the end of it. Make sure that the holes go all the way through though. Then comes time to secure it all together and enter the fire. So the propane fueled forge was a bit fiery and um, fraught with disaster. Just watch. That is enough of that. I am terrified to do any more. Um, I think I'm gonna sell this furnace and buy something that's electronic because I am, I'm shaking right now. That was terrifying. Good God. Always have a fire extinguisher on hand though, just in case I was ready. <laughs> oh. So this is why I freaked out. Um, so a small flame broke out right there. Like it was going up the fuel line. And um, that would be 
terrible if that happened, so. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Why do I do these things? Why do I think I can do this with no training and just watching some YouTube videos? That was terrifying. I'm not giving up. This is a quest of my honor. Well, okay, I'm back with a new furnace that is electric. And if I learned anything from last time, it's that fire bad, fire hot. I did a bit of research and it seems that fire in like next to the fuel line wouldn't necessarily kill me because there has to be oxygen like with the fuel for it to ignite. But still, super scary and you never know what could have happened. Um, my extent of research is not um, extensive, so. Yeah, but I think I have come away a bit wiser, um, albeit, I don't know if I'm optimistic, I don't know. So I have a burnout kiln that is used for lost wax casting, and that's something that, that I've wanted to get into for a while now, so it's a worthwhile investment for me. But I'm not exactly sure if people use it to melt their metals just like on its own if they're not doing the lost wax, because I know if you are doing lost wax, you need to have both going at the same time. Um, but for my purposes now, all I need is something to make the metal hot enough to melt. So it should be adequate. Right now I'm waiting for the furnace to um, cool down from its initial burnout cycle and should be ready to put metal in it here pretty soon. And I'm, I'm super nervous. <sighs> yeah. But. Some really positive news is I got a little kitten. Her name is Spider and she is a little tiny baby rescue girl. And she's amazing, so say hello to Spider. Okay, that's all. So once I have the kiln turned on but not hot yet, I put the graphite thingy with the metal in it into its innards and close it. And wait for it to reach temp and for the metal to melt. And then it's as easy as just pouring. By easy, I mean extra super scary. Okay, so it is cast and cooled enough to where I think I can open it. Um, I have zero faith that this worked, so whatever happens, happens now. Are you ready? Okay, yeah, so there's uh, something in there. It's, um, wouldn't call it a witcher medallion. <laughs> We're having a um, gargoyle experience all over again. Oh my god, it's so close though. Okay, hold on. You can see what happened there. There just like wasn't enough sprue or like enough of this little area for the metal to get down into before it hardened. So it, it got close. I think I have an idea for how to try again. Back to the drawing board. One great thing about Delph clay is that you can reuse it as long as you just take out the burned areas. So just scoop it out and then break up what's in there to reuse it. So I repeat the whole process again. You've seen the details. So the only thing I did differently this time was I turned the pendant upside down and made a bigger channel for everything. Now fire. Okay, so it's cooled down enough to handle. The whole process went a lot quicker and easier this time, I think just because I have a tiny bit of experience now. I really don't wanna have to go through the whole process again, so I'm really hoping this works. Otherwise, we might be giving the Witcher something a little less than ideal. Uh, so yeah, time to see what we got. Looks like we've got a complete medallion. Oh my God, it worked. It 
friggin' work, dude. <laughs> I've never been more proud of myself overcoming something scary. So this is so awesome. Ah! God, I'm so excited. Okay, so now I just need to cut off the excess and clean it up and polish it and everything. So yeah, I can't believe that worked. This is opening up a whole new world of crafty things to me. So I'm so excited. I started by clipping off that long thing. God knows where it went. And then I tried a jewelry saw, which was garbage. So I went with a power saw or, you know, a Dremel. I tried a bunch of different bits and just kind of kept working with what I liked, which was this like metal cutting tip and then sanded it a bit, kept going back and forth. And then I finished it off by kind of polishing it. I'm not really sure if it did anything, but I guess it did. Okay, so this is seriously one of those times where I'm like, I can't believe I just made that. Just completely out of nothing, just a few hunks of metal. It's far from perfect, but I think that's part of the charm, that it looks hand-forged, which I mean is so true to the lore of the game. And I'm like really excited to give it to my husband. I mean, The Witcher. Yeah, that was a huge learning experience. I conquered a fear, I think, of the, the scary, melty, hot stuff, and I think I'm ready to give it to him. So let's go.